would like to introduce our next speaker, uh, Ruf Jadralia. Um, well, he has achieved so much at such a young age, but I'll just sum up a few of his achievements. Um, he's an international M&A lawyer at this firm. He's the author of 19 books, over 3,200 pages worth on Hinduism, and he's given over 150 hours of public talks interpreting the Bhagavad Gita, the Hanuman Chalisa, the Ramayan, the Srimad Bhagavad, the Upanishads, as well as on yoga and meditation at CMS, BT, PwC, BBC Radio, New Sound Radio, <laughs> King's College London, and to many communities around the UK. Um, as a lawyer, he's worked on many famous transactions, such as the Euro 277 million acquisition by the New York Stock Exchange listed company, Kenner Metal Inc., um, of the Deloros Delight Group from Duke Street Capital, as well as a two billion pounds wind farm joint venture with RWE, Stadwerke, Munchen, I hope I've said that correct, and Siemens. As a spiritual speaker, his talks are watched in over 149 countries uh, around the world and are broadcast live on the radio. His talk is entitled The Unique Symbolism of Shiva and What We Can Learn from the Family of Shiva About Ideal Family Life. Please welcome the group. Om Namah Shivaya. Dear friends, on behalf of the CMS Hindu Network and the law firm CMS, I invite you to our third annual Diwali celebrations in 2013. India is a country of over 640,000 villages that stretch from the snow-capped Himalayas in the north to the beaches of Tamil Nadu and Kerala in the south, from the deserts of Gujarat and Rajasthan in the west to Kolkata in the east, where the river Ganga merges with the sea. Every single one of these villages, despite the variations in language, culture, customs, every single one of these plus 640,000 villages have three things in common. They all have a temple of Ganesh, they all have a temple of Hanuman, and they all have a temple of Shiva. There may be temples of other gods or not, but temples of these three gods we found in each and every village in India. In 2011, on our Diwali event, when we first announced ourselves to the outside world, we spoke about the seven leadership qualities of Lord Ganesh. In our 2012 event, Diwali event, when we spoke about the secrets of success in career management that we can learn from the Hanuman Chalisa. And now, at our 2013 Diwali event, when our teachings have spread to 149 countries around the world, we are standing here speaking to you on the unique symbolism of the God of the Gods, Mahadev Shiva. The unique symbolism of Shiva is truly wonderful. How can I talk about the greatness of Shivji for just 20 minutes? For the person that nobody looks after, Shivji will look after them. This is the first and foremost greatness of Shivji. If nobody looks after the person, then Shivji will look after them. Pushpadanta says in the famous Mahimna Stotram, the composition in praise of Shiva, Amalgayam Shilam, Tavabhavatu Namamye Meva Akilam, Sashane Shwakiriya, Svarahara Pishacha, Sahachara, Chitasma, Pasmalepa, Shrugapi, Nirakoti, Parikara, meaning, Lord, whatever inauspicious things they are, they come to you and become good for people's well being. You live in a mortuary where you play your divine games. You are the hunter of desires. Your friends are ghosts and goblins. You smear your body with ashes. You wear a necklace of skulls. You can see the picture on your right. Um, where does Shivji live? In a mortuary. Some people live on Bishop's Avenue. Some people live in Kensington. Some people live in Chelsea, where they'll be appreciated and where they'll get recognition. <coughs> Shivji lives in a mortuary. This is a place that is never going to get appreciated. Is this a place to live? This is where Shivji lives. Not only does he live in the mortuary, he plays his Leela, divine games there, and he's happy there. The place where nobody goes is his eternal abode. This is the first acceptance. Pushpadanta addresses Shivji as the killer of desires. Fair enough. 
We, he lives in a mortuary and we believe this. Many times people live in places that may not give them appreciation or recognition, but at least you all have social circles, right? You have good friends or not. Who are Shivji's friends? The ghosts and goblins. What is the most impure thing out of all the impure things in the world? It is ashes. This is the most impure thing in the world. And let's say that there's someone that you've liked age 50, 60, 70, you've lived with them, you've eaten with them every day, you've spoken with them, you've traveled with them, you've done everything and you have so much feelings towards them. One day that person dies and the dead body leaves the house and is cremated. We have that person's body is diminished with his ashes. Does anybody bring this in the house? People just say to put it outside or put it into the ashes locker for when they go to Prayag, Hardwar or any other holy town on the banks of the Ganga River and they resolve that they will take the ashes from the ashes locker with them. The person is so dear to them and yet they still do not keep the ashes. It is the most impure thing. What does Shivji do? He smears in his entire body with ashes. Through this, Shivji shows us that, as it said in the Ush Ishav Upanishad, Idam Basmatam Shariram Krutosmara, 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 Krutosmara. It's a repetition. The body is a form of ashes. The body that is going to be in ashes in 70 years, Shivji has made into ashes right now. This is because in the entire great duration of existence, what is 70 years, 80 years, or 90 years? It's just a small amount. Shivji is sitting there today, having accepted what is going to happen tomorrow. This is the unique symbolism of Shiva. Shivji wears a necklace of skulls. I've heard that Lao Tzu, we've got people here from Chinese backgrounds, Lao Tzu, who was a great thinker in China, was once walking through a jungle. He felt something underneath his foot and he stumbled. He saw a spherical creature that just rolled away. Lao Tzu found this strange. It was a little dark and Lao Tzu thought that it could not be a rock because it does not have as much weight as a rock. Lao Tzu found this strange and wondered what had hurt him underneath his foot. He tried to search for it and he found it. He realized that it was a skull of a person. Lao Tzu kept this skull with him wherever he went. His pupils found it strange, such a great personality, a wise person, a knowledgeable person such as Lao Tzu, who so many people from all around the world would come and see to attain wisdom, was sitting there with a skull next to him. His people said it gives the wrong message to people and it looks bad. The pupils asked why he keeps the skull with him. Lao Tzu said he has learned a lot from this skull. His pupils asked him what? Lao Tzu said, I stepped on it and hurt it, yet it did not say anything to me. If this person was living and I stepped on him, then what would have happened? That is why this skull teaches me from now on that just like I stepped on the skull today, in the same way, somebody will step on the skull of mine one day. That is why, whenever I walk around with my head held up high, how will this work? Therefore, the skull always reminds me about humility and selflessness. Shivji is standing there with a whole necklace of skulls. Shivji has a snake as an ornament. A snake is a symbol of death and a symbol of time. Ordinary people fear snakes and run away from snakes. The snake in the form of death and time increases the grace of Shivji and Shivji uses it as an ornament. Whatever inauspicious things they are, they come to Shivji and become good for people's well-being. This is the unique symbolism of Shiva. Nothing impure remains when it goes to Shivji. Shivji, you, can't see, you can see in that photo, he holds a trishul, a trident in his hand. It has three sharp points representing the three forces of nature. Anyone know these three forces of nature? Beauty class teachers? <laughs> Sattva, goodness, rajas, passion, and tamas, dullness or inactivity. The fact that he holds the trishul in his hand shows that he is beyond the three forces, and when you're beyond them, then you can use them as a weapon. What are these three forces of nature? Swami Ramakrishnan, who was the guru of Swami Vivekanand, gave us a very beautiful example. A prince was walking through a jungle. He was a prince, and so he was his nature to wear jewelry and adornments all over his body. Suddenly, three <coughs> thieves came and robbed the prince. The prince lost everything. One of these thieves brought out his sword and say that they would kill him. The second thief told him to leave it because they had already got so many things out of him. 
The second thief said, instead of this, they should tie him up with a rope. Therefore the second thief tied him up with a rope and all of them three ran away. The poor prince had been tied up in the jungle. After a while, the third thief came and untied the prince. He then told him to come with him because he would show the prince the way back home. The, thief then came, the third thief came back. On the road, as the palace came into view, the thief dropped the prince at the beginning of the highway and told him that it would lead to his father's house, the palace. The prince got very happy at the third thief. He told him that the first robber tried to kill me, the second robber tried to tie me up, but you untied me, showed me the way out of the jungle and brought me to my father's palace. You come with you, I'll introduce you to my father, the king. My father will be very happy to meet you. The thief said no, because whatever he did, in the end, he's still a thief. The thief said he would show you the way, but you would have to go along. The meaning of all of this is very beautiful. The prince represents the individual soul. You, me, and everyone else is walking through this jungle of life. The three thieves that are the modes of nature, goodness, passion, and dullness, come and rob us. We are princes because we are of God. We are descendants of immortality. Whether we know it or not, or not, it is because we are of God that we have so many possessions. Of the three thieves that rob us, inactivity and dullness is the first thief that tries to finish us off. Passion is a thief that tries to tie us up instead of killing us. A human being is always tied to these bonds. The third thief is goodness that has compassion for us, unties us from these bonds, takes us out of the jungle, that is nature and up to the path of God. The individual soul likes this goodness very much and asks it to come with it to the Supreme Soul. Goodness says no, because it has freed the individual soul from the other two modes, but it is still a mode and it leads to bondage in the end. One needs to be free from th these three modes and Shivji is beyond the three modes. Shivji sits on the tiger skin. The tiger represents sensual desires and by sitting on a tiger, Shivji demonstrates his control over desires. However, this is not through suppression, but through the bliss, look at his posture, the bliss of meditation, he's meditating, as you can see from how he's seated. Hinduism never believes in suppression. It never has a list of do's and don'ts, because suppression never works. Those who are parents will know that the more you tell a child no, then the more the child will want to do that thing. If there's a child climbing on a balcony and a parent shouts at that child, climb down, then the child would not do it. Those parents who are clever will tell their children to do a puzzle indoors, or if they're even clever like Dakshan Jay, then they'll tell them to give them wonderful speeches on the Ramayan uh, at BT and CMS. Give the child something better to do. In the same way, we do not control sensual desires through suppression, but through giving the mind something better to do, and something from which the mind gets more bliss than the outside pleasures that are temporary. And there is no greater bliss than meditation. The drum in the hands of Shivji represents the sound of creation, Om. Most people spell Om as O-M. This is incorrect. It is A-U-M. A represents peace to the body, U represents peace to the mind, M represents peace to the intellect. If someone was to punch me really hard right now, and I was hurt, what sound would I make? Ah! If someone were to make me cry and hurt me emotionally, the sound that I make when I'm crying out loudly is ooh. And if I were to ask Paramji at the back there, what's 49 times 48? What would he say? Um, intellectual stimulation. Is A-U-M. A represents peace of the body, U peace of the mind, M peace of intellect. Om Shanti, 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 three times. All religions may have disagreements, for example, vegetarianism, reincarnation, but they all agree, firstly, that the world was created by sound, Nadam Brahma, and they all believe in Om. In Christianity, they say Amen at the end of the prayers. In Islam, they say Amin. Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, Sikhism, the mantra is beginning with Om. And in Western religions, what is the adjective used to describe God? Omnipresent. Omnipotent, omniscient. What do these words begin with? Omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. All of them agree in Om. The sound may be different on the outside, but the inner sound is the same. Shiva resides on Mount Kailash, which is scientifically and geographically the axis of the world. The world balances on Kailash. Shiva is the deification of wisdom, with his third eye, you can see, being the Gnan Chakshu, the eye of wisdom. 
and the whole world runs on the support of wisdom. Shiva has a crescent on his forehead, which is the moon. The moon deity was denounced by everyone, and Dr. Ron is an expert in this field, he's an astrologer, but because he was a devotee of Shiva, not only did Shiva accept him, but he placed him right on his head. God himself put his devotee on his forehead. Where can you find a unique truth like Shiva? Shivji's hair is tied in a knot from which the holy river Ganga flows from the heavens to the earth. Ganga represents the supreme wisdom, which we feel is so far in the heavens and far away, but through the blessings of Shivji, the supreme wisdom flows to the ground through these lovely senior Bhagavad Gita class teachers and is made available to every person. God is not somebody who sits in heaven, but somebody who resides in our hearts. Shivji is Bola, easily pleased, that we recognize him as Bolanat, one who is easily pleased. I remember one small event that shows us how Bola easily pleased Shivji is. Another name of Shivji is Ashutosh, which can be split into Ashu immediately and Dosh satisfied. Therefore, Ashutosh Shivji is one who is immediately satisfied. Shivji is immediately satisfied. Mahadev will be pleased if you just pour water to him. Where will you find a god like this? Where will you find a unique symbolism like this? One thief had come out of town one night. In every house he went to rob, there was either somebody awake, somebody up late talking, an elder sitting down, or something else happening. He could not find any opportunity to rob anyone. It became 4.30 a.m. in the morning when we lawyers work, and the thief thought, I have not been able to rob anything for a few days. How could it work in this day? If this business is not going well, how can I run my house? I'll have to do something. The robber went to a temple of Shivji outside the town and thought about whether he could find anything there. What can there be in the temple of Shivji? If there are temples of any other gods, then there are a lot of nice ornaments, jewels, etc. But there was nothing in the temple of Shivji. He looked around and he could not find anything. There were leaves of offerings hanging from above with holes. The thief thought he would take it and at least get two grains of chapati. He could not reach them because they were hanging from above. He wondered about what he can do, looked around, and he could not find a table to stand on. He found a big shivling. The thief stood on that shivling, went to pick up the leaves, and as soon as he reached them, he saw a lot of brightness coming out of the shivling. The thief became frightened and wondered who it was. He saw in front of him, Shivji was standing there. Shivji said, ask what you want and I'll give it to you. The thief said, leave it friend, I have no time for pranks. Uh, let me take the jug and go. I do not want anything else. Shiva said, I'm Shiva. The thief said, whoever you are, let me take this picture and go. I have not got anything and I've been running around for so many nights and I could not find anyone. Let me take this and go. This will be enough. Shivji said, I have really become manifest. Just ask. The thief just would not believe that Shivji himself had come in front of him. Do we ever believe it? Let us say that God has come in front of us in the middle of the night and said, ask what you want and I'll give it to you. Who would think that we think it's someone else and we'll tell them to go outside wherever they are. We'll tell us to let us sleep at that time. Can we imagine that the Lord himself will come and stand in front of us and tell us, ask what you want and I'll give it to you. It feels nice to listen to it in the stories. The thief said, brother, I don't want anything. Just leave me. Let me take this. While this conversation was going on, the priest came and the priest recognized Shivji. The priest performed Shaswat Dangvat Pranam, bowing down completely to Shivji's feet and addressed the Lord. Shivji does, did not even look at him and told the thief, just ask quickly. The thief said, brother, the priest has come, so just let me run out quickly. The Shivji said, just ask quickly. The priest found it strange that Shivji was granting a boon to the thief. The priest asked Shivji, Lord, you're granting a boon. He's a thief of the town. He commits robberies and he's a rogue. He has never done anything. You're granting him a boon? Lord, you're making a mistake. I have come to the temples five, ten minutes late today. You thought I've come at the right time and therefore you think he's a priest. God, I'm the priest and not him. Shivji told the thief, just ask quickly. The priest said, Lord, you're telling him, until now I've offered so many things to you, but you're telling him to ask for what he wants. I've offered you water, milk, black sesame streets, billy butter leaves, gardens of flowers, and so many other things, Lord, in the last 40 years, so grant me this boon, Lord. Why are you telling him to ask for what he wants? He has not offered anything to you. Shivji looked at the priest and said, Brother, for the last 40 years, you have offered only water, milk, black sesame streets, 
Bodhi Patra leaves garlands of flowers and such things, whereas today this man himself has climbed on me. What can I not give to somebody who himself has climbed on me? What I mean to say is that the unique symbolism of Shivja, Shivji cannot be compared. Shivji is easily pleased. Shri Krishna says in the Gita of the Rudras, Shankara is his vibhuti, his divine manifestation. The whole family of Shivji is worth understanding. You see that there's so many gods, but this unique symbolism of Shivji is exceptional. You can worship Shri Krishna, who is my Ishtadev. With Shri Krishna, you can worship Radhaji or Rukmani, and that is it. But there are no temples of Shri Krishna's son. Pradumya is not worshipped anywhere. Anirudh is not worshipped anywhere. There are no temples of them. But if you look at Shivji's family, then Shiva is worshipped. Mother Parvati, his wife, is worshipped. Ganesh, his son, is worshipped. And also Kartike, his other son, is worshipped. The mother, the father, and the sons are all worshipped. Even Shivji's vehicles are worshipped. The mother, the father, and the sons are all worshipped. This is an exceptional family and is a family worth thinking about a lot. Whoever wishes for well-being to happen in their lives can learn a lot from this family. First of all, Shivji accepts anyone, everyone. This is the first thing to learn from the family of Shivji. Every person is accepted. There is no press on, pressure on anyone. You do not see pressure on anyone from Shivji. If there is a rose flower in a house, and there are four people in the house, then all four people are arguing over that flower. flower. There is a husband aged 45, a wife aged 42, a daughter aged 18, and a son aged 15. There's a family of four people. There's a rose flower that has bloomed in a pot on the balcony. In that evening, they have to go to a wedding reception. They're getting ready. The husband said, I will wear it on my suit, the rose that has bloomed outside. The wife says, leave it. You don't even bring me a flower for two pounds from Waitrose. Let me put this flower that is grown from there on my hair. Today, I'm going to tie my hair in a knot. I want it. The 18-year-old daughter comes to her mother and says, Mother, there's white hairs growing on your hair. A rose does not suit white hair. I'll wear the rose. The 15-year-old boy says, No, I've had this new suit tailored in Ealing Road. I'll wear the rose. There's one rose and four people are arguing over it. So these four people may even have a fight over it. But will anyone fight over a simple datura flower? Shivji says, whether you offer me a rose or not, it's fine, because I do not want it. But do offer me a datura flower. If nobody wants to take it, then Shivji will take it. The first thing is that anyone will be accepted. Secondly, in temples of Shivji, there is no link with time. Ideally, if you look at it, temples of Shivji are never padlocked. Temples of other gods may be open only during worship hours, and will be padlocked during other times, there's a sweetness why worshipping takes place at certain times. Eight times a day, you think about how well my Lord must have slept. This is a completely different thing, but when we talk about the unique symbolism of Shiva, he's awake 24 hours a day because he's a father of the universe. He says, son or daughter, come to me. I'm sitting here waiting for you. You do not need to take out time for me. I am ever waiting for you. This is a unique symbolism of Shiva. When this is feeling is there in a the family, then well-being happens for the family and the whole family is worshipped. Everybody in the family should have time for everyone in the family. Today, do we have time for the people in our families? Does a husband have time for his wife? Does a wife have time for a husband? Do the parents have time for their children? Does a child have time for their parents? If you do not have time, then well-being will not happen for the family. Finally, third, if there is union and harmony, then well-being will happen to the family. People in a family should not fear each other. We see this from the family of Shivji and the unique symbolism of Shivji. Shivji. You should worship the family of Shivji. Shivji's vehicle is Nandi, who is a buffalo. Bhagavati Ji, Shivji's wife, who is Shakti, and Mataji, has a lion as a vehicle. Buffaloes and lions are born enemies. If a lion sees a buffalo, then you'll not leave it alive. But in the family of Shivji, both of them are sitting together peacefully. They've forgotten their habitual venom towards each other. Ganeshji's vehicle is a mouse, and Kartika's vehicle is a peacock. Mice and peacocks are enemies, but together, they sit together in Shivji's family. The mouse is sitting there quietly in the presence of the peacock. When these meet, then we get the modak of Lord Ganesh, Ganpati. We commonly define modak as ladus, Indian sweet balls. The word modak can be split into moda, meaning bliss, and ka, happiness. Therefore, when happiness and bliss meet in prasad, then this Ganeshji, then this is Mordok. Mordok means one who gives bliss. This is not the pressure that comes for when you put the sweet in your mouth. It means bliss. Ganeshji gives us bliss. One who gives us bliss is Ganeshji. All of this is needed in the family. My dear friends, on this auspicious occasion, may Lord Shiva bless you and all your families with prosperity, good health and success.
Thank you.